Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this tutorial series, we are designing this pop-up using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And in the previous video, I showed you how to write the HTML of this design. And uh, this is how it looks right now. We have written the HTML and we haven't added any CSS over here. So if you haven't watched this video, you can go ahead and watch it. I will leave the link in the description of this video. And uh, in this video, we're going to add the CSS and we'll make it look like this. And we'll also add some JavaScript to hide and display this pop-up. So when you click on this close button, we can see that the pop-up disappears. And when you click on this display the stats button, it comes back up. So we're going to add the CSS and the JavaScript in this video. So let's get started. All right, this is the progress as of now. We have a division with the class of pop-up container and in that we have all these elements. Now we have already linked our CSS file over here. So let's go to our style.css file and let's start styling this. The first thing we will select is the pop-up container and we will set a width of 600 pixels and we'll also add a background color and we'll set the background color to EDF6F9 and let's go back to our design and this is how it looks right now. We have 600 pixels of width and we have this background color. Now let's bring this pop-up to the center. So for that, let's set the position to fixed and we'll set the left position to 50% and the top position to 50%. And now we can see that the pop-up starts from the center. Now to fix this, we have to move this 50% of itself to the left and to the top. So for that, you have to type transform, translate and set it to negative 50% for the X and the Y axis. And now we can see that it is exactly in the center. Now the next thing we will do is we will decrease the width of this chart. So let's go back to our HTML. And here we can see for the chart, we have this division with the class of chart container. And in that we have this canvas. So let's style this chart container. Let's go back to our style.css file. And here let's type pop-up container, chart container. And we'll set the width to 300 pixels. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to set this chart and this data side by side. So here we can see we have this chart on the left and this text on the right. So let's do that. Let's go back to our HTML and here we can see we have this uh, division with the class of pop-up content and in that we have this chart container division and also this pop-up details division. So we will add a display of flex to this pop-up content so that both these elements will be one next to the other. So let's go back to our style.css file and let's type pop-up container and pop-up content and let's set the display to flex and let's also decrease the size of this close button so let's go back and for that we have a division with the class of close button so let's target that in the CSS here let's type pop-up container close btn and let's set the width to 30 pixels all right, now the next thing we will do is we will change the font of this text. So let's go back and uh, here let's type font family and let's set it to railway and sans serif. And now we need to add the link of this railway font inside our HTML. So here I'm in fonts.google.com and let's search for railway. And let's select this font. And we need to have the bold version and also this uh, I think this is a semi bold version so let's go back to our fonts.google.com and let's select the fonts that we need so we need to have this version right here bold 700 and I think we have this bold 700 for this text over here and for this heading we will have this style over here called black 900 so let's select this style and let's click on this view your selected families and now let's copy this link and paste it in our HTML. So let's go back to our HTML and here in the head section, I'll just paste the link. All right, now we can see we have this railway font for the text. Now let's add some padding to this uh, pop-up container. So here let's type padding and we'll set the padding to eight pixels top and bottom and 32 pixels left and right. And we'll also add rounded corners. So let's type border radius and let's set it to 8 pixels and we'll also add some box shadow so let's type box shadow and we'll set the values to 0, 4 pixels, 20 pixels, negative 8 pixels 
and for the color we will set it to RGBA 0, 0, 0 and 0 0.3 Alright, now the next thing we will do is we will style this heading. So for the heading we have an S3. So here we can see we have this S3. So let's style that. Here I'll just type pop-up container S3. And we will set the font size to 30 pixels. And we'll set the font weight to 900. And we'll also text align it to the center. So I'll just type text align and center. And uh, let's set it to uppercase so let's type text transform and let's set it to uppercase and let's set the color of the text to 2421 3d and let's set the margin to 16 pixels top and bottom and 0 for left and right all right now let's style this pop-up details so if we go back to our html we have this division with the class of pop-up details so let's style this so here I'll just type pop-up container and let's type pop-up details and let's set the font weight to 700 and we'll set a line height of 2 and let's set the color of the text to the same color. Alright, now the next thing we need to do is we need to have this border left over here and we also need to bring this to the center. So let's do that. So here I'll just type border left and we'll set it to 1 pixel solid and for the color we will set it to 9F96F1 and let's also set a padding we'll set a padding left and we'll set it to 20 pixels and now we can see we have this border left over here and let's also bring this to the center so for that we have to type align self and set it to center and now we can see that our text is in the center vertically. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to style this close button. Now we have to position this close button to the top right over here. So let's do that. Here we have the close button styles. Let's set the position to absolute. And this will be positioned relative to its parent which is uh, this pop-up container over here. And let's set the right position to 24 pixels and the top position to 24 pixels. Now we can see we have this button at the correct position and uh, here at the bottom we don't have much padding so let's add some padding over here at the bottom. So let's go to the pop-up container and here we'll just type padding bottom and we'll set it to 20 pixels. Now we need to have a different color for this close button. So if you go back to our design here we can see we have this red color over here and it is the same color as this color right here. So let's change the color of the close button. Let's go back to our HTML. And here we can see we have added this SVG for the close button. And here we need to change the color in the stroke. So let's scroll down and let's copy this color of Unity. And let's paste it over here. Let's also add a hash. And now we can see we have this red color. Now we also need to have a hover effect when we hover over this. So let's do that. Let's go back to our CSS. And... Uh, here for the close button let's add a hover effect so let's type pop-up container close btn colon hover and let's type transform scale and we'll set the scale to 1.2 and we'll also add a smooth transition so let's type transition and set it to all 100 milliseconds ease and when we hover over this we also need to have the cursor set to pointer so let's do that I'll just set cursor to pointer and now we can see everything looks all right. Now the last thing we need to style is this display the stats button. So let's go back to our HTML. And uh, here we can see we have a button with the class of stats button. So let's style that. Here I'll just type stats btn. And let's set a padding of 12 pixels top and bottom and 24 pixels left and right. And uh, let's set the background color to 2421 3D. And let's set the color of the text to white. And let's also remove the border. So I'll just set the border to none. And let's add a border radius of 8 pixels. And let's set the font size to 20 pixels. And let's also set the cursor to pointer. And now we can see we have this display the stats button. Now let's also add some basic styling for the mobile version. So in our original design we can see that when we have a smaller screen 
we have a different layout. The chart is at the top and the text is at the bottom. And we also have a different styling for this close button. So let's do that. So here I'll just create a media query. So I'll just tap at media. And here we'll just tap max width of 720 pixels. So now when we have the screen width of less than 720 pixels, all the CSS that we have inside this block will be added to the page. Now here we have set the display of the pop-up content to flex so that these elements are one next to the other. Now here we have to select the same division. So let's type pop-up container, pop-up content and let's set the flex direction to column. And now we can see these elements are one below the other. And let's also align them to the center. So let's type align items and let's set it to center. And we'll also set a width for the pop-up container. So let's type pop-up container and let's set the width to 80% of the screen width. And let's also style this close button. So let's type pop-up container close btn and let's set the top position to negative 20 pixels and the right position to 0 and let's set the background color to this dark color over here and let's set a padding of 2 pixels top and bottom and 4 pixels left and right and that's it with the styling of the close button so now we can see our pop-up is completely responsive now the last thing we will do is we will add the functionality for this display the stats button so when we click on this button we need to display this pop-up and when we click on the close button we need to hide it so let's do that let's go back to our html and here we have already added some javascript in the script tag so here i'll just create one more script tag you can add the script over here as well but i just want to keep it separate so here i'll just reference some of the elements from the html so we need to reference this pop-up container and also this close button and also this display the stats button now what we're going to do is we're going to add a class called active to this pop-up container and when we add the active class we're going to display this and when we remove the active class we're going to hide this so let's go back to our css and let's add the active class over here first so here i'll just have pop-up container dot active and you have to make sure that you don't have any space between these two classes and what we'll do over here is that by default we will set the opacity to zero and here for the transform we'll set the y value to zero and in the active class let's set the transform translate to negative 50 percent and negative 50 percent and we'll also set the opacity back to 1. And let's also add a smooth transition. So let's type transition. And we'll set all to 500 milliseconds. And for the easing function, I just created a cubic bezier. So I'll just type cubic bezier. And I have set the values to 0 0.07 and 0 0.71 and 0 0.3 and 1.2. And now let's go back to our HTML and let's add the active class over here. And now we can see that our pop-up container is displayed over here. But if we remove the active class, we can see that it is not being displayed. But we can see that some of the elements are clickable. So here we can see that we have a different cursor. So we also need to remove the pointer events. So let's go back and let's go to our styler CSS file. And here we will set pointer events to none so that nothing is clickable. And here we will set the pointer events back to auto. Right now let's go back to our index.html file and we need to reference the stats button, the pop-up container and also the close button inside the JavaScript. So let's go back over here inside the script and let's create some constants. So let's type const and let's type pop-up container equals document.query selector and pop-up container and let's reference the stats button so let's type stats btn equals document dot query selector stats btn and const close btn equals document dot query selector pop-up container close btn All right now let's add an event listener to this stats button so let's type stats btn dot add event listener and we will listen for the click event and when we click on the stats button we need to display the pop-up container so we will add a class of active to that. So let's type pop-up container dot class list dot add and here we'll type active. And now when we click on the close button, we need to remove the active class. So let's type close btn dot add event listener 
click and here we'll create an error function and let's type popup container dot class list dot remove and we'll remove the active class and now let's check whether it works so let's go back over here and let's click on this display the stats button and now we can see that the popup is displayed over here and if I click on this close button it disappears so everything works all right let's also check out the mobile version let's click on this display the stats button and we have the pop-up displayed over here and if I click on this close button it goes back so everything works all right so that's basically how you create a pop-up using HTML CSS and JavaScript so that's it for this video I will leave the link of the source code in the description of this video and if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day